Hey, hi everyone. I got a, a couple questions from number one, and and rightfully so. Uh, one's not necessarily hard, but it might be a little uh, confusing here. So, so I thought I would uh, run through it here. Um, it simply uh, says this. It says you have a ball. So let me kind of make a little baseball here and say a ball is dropped from a height of four meters. Okay, so four meters and makes an elastic collision with the ground. Now, going back to Physics 121, remember, uh, elastic <coughs> means the kinetic energy before the collision is equal to the kinetic energy after the collision. Uh, they go a little further, says, assume no mechanical energy is lost also to air resistance. So, so we don't have any loss uh, on the collision. So, you know, you might say there's no heat between the earth and the ball when it hits. That's the elastic part. And then we also are saying that as it drops, the collision with the air molecules are also, uh, you know, no heat. Um, maybe a little artificial, but nonetheless, that's the, the, the parameters here. Uh, okay, so knowing that, they go on to A, and it says show... Uh, that the uh, ensuring motion is periodic. So periodic means it keeps repeating itself here. So you might start off by saying, okay, up here at the top, the energy, I'll go E for energy, is MGY initial. Uh, you might even argue that Y initial is four meters. Okay, so that's the, the starting energy. And as it falls, then it would have less potential energy but more kinetic energy but none of it goes to heat so right before the impact you could say this would be one half mv squared that's where all that that energy goes because again they said no 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 air resistance okay and so maybe i'll call this the uh, initial speed. Hopefully that's not confusing. What I mean by that is the initial before the collision with the earth. It's not, of course, the initial up here. The initial when you drop it is zero. Uh, in fact, maybe I'll just number it instead. So let's call that velocity number one. We drop it, and so let's call this velocity number two. So velocity number two is right before the impact. Now, it'll make the impact, and now I'll, I'll draw a new picture with it going up. And it's going to have some kinetic energy, one-half mv, and I'll call it 3 uh, squared. Uh, and then, of course, in a general problem, you would say, well, plus potential energy, which is zero still, it hasn't gone up, and then heat. Uh, but this heat would be zero. That was the definition of elastic, so they made that very clear. So, so that's why I didn't include any heat as it was falling down. They said no air resistance, and that's also why I'll include no heat when it made the impact with the Earth. And, of course, then right here, you can then begin to see that velocity number two would be the same as velocity number three. That's the uh, consequence of not losing any energy to heat. It must all remain as kinetic energy at that point. And, and then, of course, if it then has this speed, it'll go up till it comes to a stop again. Uh, and so it'll have an energy of mg, you might call this y final. Uh, which would have to equal to the kinetic energy it had down at the bottom, which would have to be the kinetic energy down at the bottom before the impact. So this is the kinetic energy at the bottom after the impact, before the impact. But we just proved that those were equal, um, which we also then proved this would be the mg4. And so what I'm trying to get at is this would be our way of kind of arguing through the problem that if we don't lose any energy due to heat... Uh, and, and, you know, both options are th thrown out, the air resistance and the impact with the earth, because it's only hitting air molecules and the earth. And it, it says if those are all without any heat, uh, then the object's going to come all the way back up to the same height and then start all over again. Uh, and that, that's it. it. It just repeats itself. So, so that, I guess, is the proof <clears throat> that it's periodic. <clears throat> it would get right back where it started, and it would go again and again and again and again and again. And so something that repeats itself is called periodic. Now, don't confuse that with part C, which is simple harmonic. Okay, so that's coming. But this definitely repeats itself. So I would definitely say that this is periodic, no doubt. 
And then I'd have to go back to Physics 121 when it says determined the period uh, of the motion. And you might remember, of course, this equation from our second chapter when we have a constant uh, acceleration. And if we then, you know, say something such as, okay, it's going to start at zero and go all the way down to the ground, that'd be four meters, uh, starting with a zero initial speed. I called that speed one. And then has an acceleration of 9.8. I suppose if we want to be calling down negative, I should have called that a negative, and the acceleration then would be negative. And then t squared. So, again, these are problems you did in Physics 121. And if I get out my, my calculator here, I would have a 4 multiplied by a 2 divided by a 9.8. And taking its square root is about a 0.903. So, um, it would take, you know, almost a second, not quite a second, but almost a second to to fall. Um, now, that's not its period, because its period is, you know, the time it takes to get back where it started, so then it would have to go up, and all of this would be in reverse, so I'll just go times two to double the time, and we're looking at 1.81 seconds then for the period. So, is it periodic in eight? Yes. Uh, how long does it take to get back to where it started? It looks like 1.81 uh, seconds. So, yes, definitely periodic. Yes, this is the period. However, now it says, is it simple harmonic motion? And I think the author really put this in here because what this chapter was centered around is simple harmonic motion, not anything that's that's periodic. Um, and in fact, you hopefully saw that when we solved our problems here for our simple harmonic motion, uh, something that started at the, its maximum, so kind of like this problem, would follow a cosine pattern. Uh, but it could as easily follow a sine pattern. Those anything following those patterns, oops, would be simple harmonic. And of course, we got that solution to anything that looked like this the second derivative of its position, if it is equal to negative, with something out in front, and that position again. Okay, the solution is this sines and cosines. It's what we call simple harmonic motion. So looking either at the graph of the motion or looking at the equation of the motion, remember this is acceleration, we should be able to determine if something is simple harmonic motion. Now, we already showed in this problem that this is a harmonic or periodic, but it may not be simple. And it definitely is not. And in fact, maybe you even remember from Physics 121 that if you plotted the height, um, I'll call it y, uh, versus the time, uh, this is the shape of a parabola. In fact, you can see that in this equation we use to solve for the period. So then it would bounce off and come back up and then fall back down, and bounce off, and come back up. So the path that this thing makes over time is not a sine or a cosine. So it's not simple harmonic motion. Now, it is periodic, right? It has the same thing. It starts here, a moment later it's here. In fact, 1.81 seconds is there. The next period is 1.81 seconds. So it's definitely periodic, but it is not simple. Uh, you can show, show that in the math because we know that the acceleration is g, which is a constant number and has nothing to do with the position. It does, you, know, you might say negative, so it does have the negative, but it doesn't have the function back. Uh, 
Uh, you could write it this way. Acceleration equals F over M. And acceleration is the second derivative of its position, if you call it X or if you want to call it Y. But nonetheless, you get an mg minus, if you will, an m, and you get a minus g. But again, that equation does not look like that. That's why it doesn't have a solution. That is sinusoidal. It has a solution, or cosinusoidal. It, it has a solution that is this funny thing, which is kind of this parabola that are kind of hooked together. Uh, it's not a continuous function, so you can't really write it as a, a, a common mathematical equation, although you could write it as a piecewise function. But it definitely is periodic, but not simple. That, that's the idea here. Okay, hope that one helps. But that's really what they were after with this, kind of the definition of simple harmonic motion is sinusoidal. This is not 